hi guys we shall talk about pneumothorax today and uh, it's a medical emergency that is very important for us to know what is pneumothorax and how to manage pneumothorax and why would you see a pneumothorax patient why would you see encounter a pneumothorax so any kind of road traffic accident or any kind of trauma that involves your penetrating trauma to your chest let's say your a uh, knife injury knife stab injury or a bullet injury or there is a blast there are metal pieces that act as a projectile motion uh, you have any kind of penetrating injury to your chest you will have pneumothorax most likely you will have pneumothorax so what is pneumothorax to understand this we should understand what is the basic uh, anatomy of the chest anatomy of the lungs okay i'll make you understand by let's say this is a cricket ball okay obviously it's a cricket ball uh, this is your lungs okay imagine this this is your lungs and this lungs is covered by two layers okay your lungs is covered by two layers uh, the, the innermost layer is known as the visceral layer and the outer one, uh, outer one is known as parietal layer okay let's say this is your visceral layer okay this is inside this is, that's the reason it's known as visceral layer and then we have the parietal layer okay so there are that's your lungs okay the inner layer, layer is your visceral layer and the outer one is your parietal layer okay between these two layers between these two this white layer and the the white polythene and the blue polythene this is the visceral layer the inner one and the outer one is known as the parietal layer between these two layer we have very less amount of liquid it's kind of oily liquid it's around 5 to 15 ml uh, that is there whenever our lungs is contracting and expanding okay there is some friction between these two between these two layers to reduce the friction there is like uh, oily like substances okay now this is the normal lungs okay that's normal lungs the ball is normal lungs the inner one layer is the visceral layer and this is the parietal layer now this layer uh, this part okay this part should not have any air okay if there's any air in this part that is known as uh, pneumothorax okay pneumothorax now why the pressure which is in the surrounding the pressure which is there in the surrounding in our atmosphere is around 760 mm of hg 760 mm of hg and the pressure which is here okay this pressure is actually a negative pressure that is between the two layers of the pleura that is the visceral pleura and the parietal pleura the pressure is around minus 2 mm hg so the pressure is less inside this now obviously if there's any trauma to this layer okay any trauma to this layer let's say this is the parietal layer is there any trauma obviously the, the, the air which is there in the atmosphere in high pressure it will enter the parietal pleura then it will go to the visceral pleura so there will be air in this part okay between the two player pleura there should not be any air between these two pleura if there is air in between these two pleura it is going to compress the lungs okay the lungs can't expand that is the main reason we are so much worried about pneumothorax so if there is air between these two layer if it is air that is pneumothorax if there is any water we say it hydrothorax if there is any blood we say it hemothorax okay there should not be any air between these two layers of course the air is there in the lungs but air should not be there between the two layers visceral layer and the parietal layer why the, the air will go inside because if there is any trauma to this, to this layer then air the pressure of air in the atmosphere is more pressure of air inside is less due to pressure uh, gradient the air will enter and it will compress the lungs that is what we don't want in pneumothorax that is the main what is actually happening in pneumothorax why it will happen any kind of penetrating injury maybe a bullet injury maybe a stab injury so this is what you can find in pneumothorax now how will you know a person is having pneumothorax let me tell you pneumothorax is mainly of two types uh, tension pneumothorax and spontaneous pneumothorax what we are discussing here is tension pneumothorax okay <sighs> so what is the clinical feature what is, how will you know the person is having so if you go to the person and if the person is able to speak because when the person is developing pneumothorax he might not be able to speak he might just say like uh, uh, no yes small small words monosyllables okay or he might not be able to speak at all he might be just nodding his head and just saying he might not be saying that's that's he won't be able to say what's the issue with it so if you go to the patient you know he's having a chest trauma he'll be penetrating bullet injury or stab injury or road traffic injury 
So you go to the person and he'll say, okay, if he's able to speak, he'll say he's having chest pain, which is uh, started uh, start suddenly, and that is very sharp kind of pain. He's having difficulty in breathing. He's having shortness of breath. He might even cough. On if you do kind of examination of the patient, if you do the examination of the patient, you will see the blood pressure is reduced. Why the blood pressure will be reduced? Because of this pressure that is uh, produced here. This is going to press your inferior vena cava and superior vena cava. Okay, that's how there will be no blood going to the heart. So obviously there will be no blood coming out of the heart. So the blood pressure will go down. Since our one of the lung is normal, another lung is uh, collapsed. So our body will try to compensate it. How will it compensate? Okay, it will compensate by increasing the breathing rate. That is the respiratory rate will go up. The person will be in respiratory distress. He will be having difficulty in breathing. The person will be having shortness of breath. The person will give you a history of uh, any kind of injury. Then the person will also will be using accessory muscles. You know, the sternocleidal muscle will be starting to the flaring of nostril will start. This will uh, suggest that the person is having pneumothorax to find out the clinically you will be doing auscultation whenever you do auscultation you won't be he uh, hearing any breath sound okay on the affected side there will be no vesicular sound there will be no breath sound you should always compare your breath sound with the another side of the lungs okay so the breath sound will be absent the blood pressure will go down maybe the oxygen saturation will also go down so this is the clinical feature that you can find now to make it sure you'll be doing a chest x-ray okay now we'll study how do you read in chest x-ray of a patient of pneumothorax thanks okay guys let us continue about the chest x-ray for pneumothorax before we start about pneumothorax uh, let us read what is the normal what is the normal Thing that we can find in normal extra just to summarize just to summarize it so this is your spinous process you should always be able to visualize four just to know that the exposure of the x-ray was good if it is adequate and this is your trachea the black one because anything which is here appears to be black and x-ray and which is fluid blood vessels bone will appear as white okay the trachea will be having air that is the reason we are having black shadow here okay it, it should be centralized okay this is your clavicle this is your clavicle these are your ribs okay these are your ribs 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 and this is your lungs this the whole black thing is lungs because lungs is containing air that is the reason it's appearing black same goes here this is your heart shadow okay that's your heart shadow so the size of the heart that we have to consider the next if you take a maximum transverse diameter of the heart and the maximum transverse diameter of the chest it should be less than 50 percent of the maximum transverse diameter of the chest okay so if this uh, size is increased uh, if the ratio is increased that means we can identify that we can get the idea that the size of the heart has increased that is which is mostly seen in congestive heart failure okay then next what we have to see is that we have to see these angles okay these angles this angle is known as costophrenic angle, <laughs> cardiophrenic angle, cardiophrenic angle, costophrenic angle. This angle should be always sharp, okay? This angle should be sharp because any water here, any fluid here will first accumulate here due to gravity. So this angle should be sharp, okay? This is costophrenic, cardiophrenic, cardiophrenic, costophrenic. Alright, so that's your heart. And just see these, these things, you know, white, white, white. These are these lines like this. These are actually your blood vessels. Remember, I told you blood vessel, bones, and water fluid will like, uh, appear as white. Okay, so these are your blood vessels. These are known as bronchiovascular markings. Okay, this is very important to see here. So always divide the chest. Once you do this, then you divide the chest X-ray in three parts. This one, two, and three, and compare it with this. The, there should not be any opacity here, and there should not be an opacity here like that. And the, uh, the it should not be um, darkness. That means the air here. It should, if it is dark here, it should be same here. It should not be like this is more darker, this is less, this is more, this is less. It should be equal in both the sides, okay? Same with this, same with this, okay? So here you can see here some white and black spot. This is actually stomach. Uh, this is your stomach here where your stomach lies. And this is the gas inside your stomach, okay? Please make sure there should not be any gas here, okay? This gas, there should not be any gas here. If there's any gas, it means there is some perforation in the intestine and that is a medical emergency. This gas here is known as 
gas under diaphragm okay now let us go to the next x-ray so now this is the chest x-ray so we'll again go with the normal protocol normal way how to read this is a clavicle okay the clavicle this is your whole thing is the lungs okay this is your lungs this is your heart the spinous let us try to read the spinous one two three and four and let us try to trace the trachea okay now i start to see a lot of problems here this is your gas here okay there is no gas here okay the angles are sharp yes angles are sharp 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 okay now let us try to read the abnormality now if i just see the trachea that as i told you the trachea should be central okay it should be centralized now see the trachea it is going off course it should be around here but it is going off course i hope you can see the trachea it is off course okay that's your trachea okay see this is your trachea it's off course it should be somewhere here your trachea should be here but it is in this pattern it should be in this it is tilted okay that means the trachea is shifted now obviously if something has to shift something has to push from this side or something has to pull from this side okay so here the lungs is actually pushing it i'll tell you why so the trachea is shifted okay now what is the next thing that you should see here is that bronchiovascular margins okay bronchiovascular markings okay these are your blood vessels okay these are your blood blood vessels if you see the blood vessels you can't see the blood vessels here okay because the lung has actually collapsed in this side okay the lungs has collapsed that's why you can't see the blood vessels okay all this black that you see is the air between the pleura this is the parietal and the visceral pleura okay the air is not in the lungs if the air was in the lungs obviously the lungs will always have blood vessels so we can see the blood vessels here but we can't see the blood vessels here that means the lung has collapsed all this black is actually the air in the pleura between the pleura now also you should always compare the blackness okay if it is more black or more uh, this side of the lungs is less black as compared to this one it is appearing more black here it is actually a bit difficult to uh, be appreciated on the camera but even if you see in the real life this is more black as compared to this the next thing that you should see is this angle you know this one this is actually more deeper as compared to this one okay so this is very typical of uh, pneumo uh, pneumothorax okay bronchiovascular margins are gone angle has been deeper as you become deeper the trachea has been shifted and it is appearing more black compare along with your uh, history and clinical findings respiratory rate will go up difficulty in breathing shortness of breath chest pain history of trauma so that's all we can say about this is pneumothorax okay so what is the next treatment they will do is that we'll place a white board needle around 16 to 18 gauge of needle they'll place it on the second intercostal space the moment they place it on the second intercostal space you'll hear a pss this pattern the immediately the patient will be relieved of this discomfort okay that's an emergency thing that has been done and been trained for all the doctors emergency doctors uh, er doctor nurses paramedics military personnel so this is how the treatment of intercostal uh, pneumothorax is done after that intercostal drain will be placed and with a neg negative suction cup okay and in, in a water seal i hope you know that what is that so just to summarize this is the chest x-ray the bronchiovascular margins are gone and the trachea has been shifted the angle here has been more deeper and it is appearing more black along with this clinical features increased uh, breathing rate difficulty in breathing shortness of breath chest pain and then history of trauma so it is pneumothorax treatment is second intercostal space 16 or 18 gauge needle has been inserted okay so that's all and if you have something then you may let me know in this comment section i'll try to answer that and thanks bye bye take care